Let's have a look through all of the big numbers that we have been seeing from the Chancellor over the course of what has been quite a busy day. Now, the autumn statement is one of those moments where you assess just how the economy is doing. So let's have a look at that biggest number of all, GDP, economic growth. And you can see, back in 2014, you can see that these are essentially numbers. These show you, six months ago, what the public finances and GDP were expected to look like at the time of the budget. And you can see that the growth was going to be 2.7% this year, 2.3% next year. What changed today? Well, we saw that economic growth is going to be stronger this year, it's going to be stronger next year, a touch weaker in 2016 and 2017. So a lot of that growth that was expected uh, in 2017 and thereafter has been pushed forward to before the election significantly. The question though is whether that has fed in to the public finances. That extra growth usually means you get a better figure when it comes to the deficit, but that wasn't necessarily the case uh, as we learned from today's numbers because this was what the deficit numbers looked like six months ago. Let's see what they look like after today's figures arrived. You can see that 86 billion was what was expected six months ago. Now we learn that it's going to be 91 billion this year. It's going to be a higher deficit in 2015 16, but a slightly lower deficit thereafter. And if you just come and look right at the end here, there is going to be a surplus of. £23 billion in 2019. That's significant. A surplus essentially means you've got more money coming into the Exchequer than going out. The problem is that we don't know where all of that money is going to come from. That £14.5 billion of that, there's still a big question mark over that. But nonetheless, the fact that things are so tight when it comes to the public finances means that there wasn't all that much money left over for the different measures. And you can see all of them uh, ranged here. Stamp duty, that's going to cost £840 million. Uh, air passenger duty, that's only going to be a kind of small uh, cost. And then the other measures like income tax, that was going to be a big one. So a lot of measures, but nonetheless it wasn't really one of those big events where you had a lot of money left to spend as a result of those disappointing finances.